talk to Jonathan now in the hook. Jonathan, I mean, you were on, I think, exactly the same helicopter that crashed today, yesterday. I mean, uh, and apparently it crashed because so many people were trying to clamber on board. I mean, the situation is absolutely desperate, isn't it? It wasn't quite like that, Matt. The helicopter was loaded with um, uh, journalists, uh, uh, Alyssa Rubin from the New York Times, who I understand is OK. Um, it was also carrying a Yazidi Kurdish uh, MP on board. And it hadn't taken on board any refugees. It was on its way to the mountain. And I spoke to the pilot just before he took off. And he said to me, I'm really worried that this helicopter is too heavy. And the, the helicopter seemed to struggle before it uh, took off. And uh, obviously, it did not make it. And the pilot is now dead. And they've got four helicopters in total. One is now down. And three have been used for combat duty. So really, there is absolutely nothing there that is devoted towards helping all those people on the mountain. Well, that's right. I saw huge piles of water stacked up on the tarmac at a military base that could not reach the people trapped on Mount Sinjar. First of all, this helicopter has crashed. But even before that, at least two helicopters were deployed uh, on combat missions to fire rockets at jihadist militants. The problem is that the, he the helicopters are part of the Iraqi army. They are controlled by Baghdad. Baghdad has a choice. It either sends helicopters to rescue Yazidis on a mountainside a minority in a part of the country which is threatening to break away and form its own state, or it fights these jihadists which occupy large swathes of, of Iraq. And the choice they made today was that it was more important to fire rockets at militants than it was to rescue people. Just four helicopters down to three, and no sign on the ground at any rate of an international relief effort of, of helicopters coming in from outside to do the job. Indeed, that was my next question. I mean, presumably people on the ground are saying, where is the international community? They were there in force just a few years ago, and now they're absent. Well, you know as well as I do, Matt, that the, the mantra of the Obama administration is that there are no American military solutions to Iraq's problems. The question is, when do you make exceptions to that? When is the exception to the rule? When do you say that military hardware could be deployed possibly setting a precedent, but anyway, could be deployed to rescue people. That decision has not yet been made. We know that uh, tornadoes from the RAF uh, are on their way to carry out surveillance missions to find out how many people are on the mountain. The problem is that once you've worked out how many people are on Mount Sinjar, I just don't know how many of them will still be alive. Jonathan Rugman, uh, thanks for your great reporting.